Hey guys, in this video we're going to create a slider so we can select how many items we want to drop and also later on we can use it to buy and sell multiple items. First thing we need to do is go to your widgets. Let's create a new one, so user interface widget blueprint and this one will be slider underscore widget. In here we need to add canvas panel. Then we will add border. Then we need another canvas panel, add it to the border, and now let's click on this border, let's anchor it to the middle, so control and shift and click, let's make it 360 and maybe half of it, so 180, now padding can be only like 2, let's change the tint, something like this, and now we can add text, add it to the canvas panel, anchor it to the middle top, maybe offset it position Y by 10, so it's not directly on the edge. This will be how many? Question mark, we will make the size of the font only like 14. And let's do justification to the center. Next thing we will add slider. So this will be the slider that we will be using to we will be using to select the items. So let's anchor it to the middle. Let's make size X 200. And I can change this handle color to maybe something yellow, copy this color and paste it and now let's change the value to 1 and change the minimum value to 1 as well. We'll need a text that will tell us what's displayed on the slider, so how much we actually want to drop. So we'll get a text, add it to the canvas panel, anchor it to the right middle, control and shift, click Let's change the size to only 30 and 30. Offset position X minus 20. Maybe minus 25. Even minus 30. And I'm going to change the size to 14 again. And now I want to have it directly next to the slider. So I'll do position 4. And this will just display number. Uh, this needs to be a variable, so we'll call it value text. Check is variable. This slider we can just rename to slider. So it doesn't have numbers next to it. And now we just need to add a couple buttons. A couple of buttons. So let's search for button. Add it to the canvas panel again. Let's change the size to 80 and 20. Anchor it to the bottom left. I'll offset position maybe 60 and this one minus 20. And we need to add text to this. Which will be OK. Or you can do confirm or whatever you like. The size can be only like 10. 12 maybe, 10 is fine. And now this button will be OK button. And what else? Maybe I can change the tint. Let's turn it down a bit. And now I'll duplicate this one. So I'll Control and D. This one will be Cancel button text will be cancel and then select the button and this one will be anchor to the other side so bottom right and I'll offset it minus 60 and minus 20 so same as the other one maybe we can move, move them close together so I'll do minus 80 here and this one will be 80 80. There we go. And we do have 
nice widget this one can go more down and we can also add some border around this so select this border wrap it with another border this one will be padding too and maybe i'll select the frame that i have for icons and i'll just make it black or close to it all right that's our widget let's go to graph compile and save we can get rid of pre-construct and event tick and on construct we need to get this slider and we need to set uh, max set value let's set value first so set value and the value will be one because it needs to be one minimum we don't want to be dropping one zero items and then we'll set max value max value will be the number or in the stack of the item so we need to create a variable this will be max value it will be type integer because we don't want to be dropping half of the item or buying or selling half of the item and we need to have a reference to our options widget so this will be options option widget option all right let's do option widget reference ref and it will be options widget object reference both of these needs to be instance editable and expose on spawn compile and save and now we do have this max value so we will set it here as a max value when this widget is constructed compile and save add it here and now let's open our option widget these buttons need to be labeled correctly so this one is the drop item button and this one is destroy item button and now in here when we click on the drop button we can move this down and up we need to do a branch check break this item info open and see if the stack is greater than one And if it's not, we're just going to drop that one item because we don't want to be creating the slider if there is only one item. So no point in that. Let's move this down as well. And now if it's true, if it's greater than one, we're going to create a widget. So drag from here, create widget. The widget will be the slider. Max value will be the stack not the max stack because if you set the max stack here you would be able to drop like 20 for potions that you don't actually have in the inventory okay it's only the stack that you have and the widget reference will be self and after we create it we add it to viewport and we set the max stack we add it to viewport and while we're here we can also create one more custom event so i'll move it further down add custom event this will be drop multiple items and in here i need an input which will be the value so integer i can name this quantity and then we're going to do for loop Mm, disconnect this because this needs to be a last index first index will be one so we'll select the correct value and we're going to just copy this part drop item so for whatever we pass from the slider we'll drop that many items okay remove from the parent we need as well but we will do it on completed so we'll remove the option widget even though it gets removed when we leave it with the mouse which is when we open another widget anyway so but this is just a precaution 
compile and save. Now we do have a we're creating the slider, we're passing it the max value, and we do have these drop multiple items. So now in here we do have on slider, you do on value changed, click on the plus. So now when the slider is changing, we need to uh, truncate this value, which will round it towards zero, like if, if you got 1.6 or something, it will become one. That's what it says. And now here we'll promote it to variable and this will be our value. Connect it here. Now this value compile needs to be default one because it would happen that if you haven't actually changed anything on a slider, minimum value was one on the slider. So it would show you like you're dropping the one item and you press okay our value will still be zero, so we don't drop any item, okay? So it needs to be one in here. And after, when we when it changes, we want to update this text in here, which is value text. So we'll get value text and set text to this value here. So this will happen every time we move the slider. And now, when we press OK, so here find the OK button, we'll do on clicked. And we will call from the option widget reference that drop multiple items, custom event. And quantity will be our value. And after that, we will remove from parent self. Also, if we click on cancel, so cancel button on clicked, we will just remove from parent. We're not doing anything. And then we can also search for on mouse leave, which if you click somewhere else, it will also click. It will also close the widget. So we'll remove from parent. Compile and save this we do have value set slider let's just check one more time it's minimum one one max value we will setting so it's all good and options widget we're dropping the item okay so this should work already but there will be few issues so let's pick up some items that have more than one stack like the potions right click so if you drop this one it just drops straight away but this one I have stack of two I'll drop the item it will open this uh, widget which actually if I enter and then leave it will close it so I'll change that mouse on mouse leave and then if you drag the slider you can see it's a little bit clunky because at the moment this whole thing is value of one and then only here in the end is value of two. So we need to make it so it actually, you know, jumps to the correct value. And that will be snapping basically. And now if you were to also drop, I keep closing it. If you were to drop two items, two potions, and then pick them up, I suddenly have three. Okay. And if I drop them again, and pick them up and I'll have five and that is because the first item we drop it will pass with a stack to the drop function so it will have stack of five if it's now if I'm dropping it now it will have a stack of five it will pass it to the drop item function and that will pass it to the interactable item and that will hold that value until we pick it up and when we're picking it up we're just picking it up with a stack of four so what we need to change is in our pickup function, instead of reworking the whole drop function and remove item function, because I don't want to be dropping multiple items, I would rather do for each loop. So in this case, we're just going to change the pickup item function. Right, pick up item. And here we're adding the new one. So when we're adding to the stack, we're always adding only one. But when we're picking up, we're adding the new item from the item info, which can have 
stack of five, for example. So what we need to do is make this, break this, and we're just going to create completely new item like this. But we won't connect the stack because stack will just be one. Compile and save. And now that will fix that issue. And now you can see if I drop two and pick them up. I do have two potions back. Okay, I can drop just one. And it all works fine. And then what we could do actually is instead of spawning it in the middle, we could spawn it same as the option widget that it will spawn with the mouse in the middle. And then when we leave it, it will close it. But it's a little bit difficult with having a slider because you need to drag that slider value and then it can happen that accidentally you leave the mouse half of the time and it's quite annoying. So instead we're going to have it open in the middle and we're going to do check that uh, that if we actually click on anything else rather than like instead of the widget then we will close it. And there will also be one issue that can happen. For example, if you were to pick up these potions again and now drop item, you have this widget open. You can see I could press tap, go over my potions, press enter and I'll drink this potion. I'll go again, drink this potion again and now I drop these two potions and I'm still dropping them. So I'm, you know, I'm multiplying the potions with the back. So we need to avoid that. But I want to leave it in the next video because there is quite a lot of fixes that we need to do. For example, the snapping of the bar itself, then leaving it with the mouse and preventing the bugs so you can drop the items while you have the widget open. So I'll do that in the next one. Until then, bye.